Uh, hi guys, so uh, let's check up your question, exam question, and exam question about ischemic heart disease and angina pectoris. So I have received these questions that you don't understand, and I will answer. Huh? So actually, my beloved, in in a broad sense, in a broad sense, in the broad sense, ischemic heart disease and coronary artery disease, we can say it's the same thing. Yes, there are a lot of not some nuances, but it's the same thing. So if you start answering on a big board exam, like uh, this, in this manner. Uh, the answer coronary artery disease is not a disaster. So don't panic and answer coronary artery disease. Uh, anyway, take your pens, papers, and let's go on. So, uh, some words about pathophysiology of uh, ischemic heart disease. I repeat, it's the like uh, coronary artery disease, not a huge difference between. Ischemic heart disease occurs due to a mismatch between myocardial oxygen supply and demand. So it's a balance. Normally it's a balance. And here we see in the imbalance between myocardial oxygen supply and demand. The primary cause, of course, definitely is atherosclerosis, where lipid deposits and inflammatory cells accumulate in the where? In the coronary artery disease forming plaques. So that's why it's a coronary artery disease, because it's a coronary artery problems. Of course, this is a long history of metabolic syndrome chain, so-called uh, cardiovascular continuum. It starts with metabolic syndrome. I repeat it several times, and I will repeat, and I will repeat. So it starts with, with uh, decades ago, huh? It starts with metabolic syndrome, that metabolic syndrome gives us atherosclerosis, then metherosclerosis gives us uh, cardiovascular diseases, coronary artery disease, and ischemic heart disease, because it's the same thing. So about plaques that you don't understand, uh, yes, please, thank you uh, for a question. Uh, once again, my beloved, uh, stable atherosclerotic plaques caused fixed narrowing of the arteries leading to stable angina. Hmm? So stable atherosclerotic plaques caused fixed narrowing of arteries leading to stable angina. And once again, what does it mean stable? Stable means predictable. Please remember that. And answering this man on the board exams, big exams, doesn't matter where you are in Armenia, uh, Russia, United States, Europe, doesn't matter. India, God bless Whereas unstable plaques can rupture, triggering thrombus formation and acute coronary syndrome, such as unstable angina and myocardial infarction. Okay, so this is the principal cause. This atherosclerosis is the core. Atherosclerosis is the answer. So uh, other potential causes of ischemia include coronary artery spasm, vasospastic angina. But even with this uh, definition, with this in this case, atherosclerosis plays a major role. Embolism of or dissection of coronary arteries and microvascular dysfunction affecting small coronary vessels. But principle is atherosclerosis. Mm -hmm. So about symptoms. So we know that there was, uh, exists a so-called triada. What does it mean? So the three principal things, so retrosternal chain, uh, chest pain, retrosternal chest pain, described as a pressure, squeezing or heaviness. Pains arrive in, uh, the angina arrives in uh, stress and calms, three, third point, with nitroglycerin or at rest. Concerning pain, in radiation, it might be to left arm, jaw, neck or a back. But the principle, once again, triad, retrosternal pain, feeling uh, like a pressure on the chest. Second, pain arrives during physical activity. And third, pain calms or cancel when you take, no, not you, uh, your patient take medication like a nitroglycerin. And at rest. Yes, we can have associated symptoms, shortness of breath, nausea, dizziness, sweating. But the principle is this third, this three. And don't forget that relieved by rest or nitroglycerin in stable angina. 
So about diagnosis, of course, we can say that this condition we can fix um, a diagnose during this triadal without any additional uh, analysis. This triad, the retrosternal pain, pain arrives during physical activity and comes at relieved by rest or nitroglycerin in stable conditions. About another uh, data, ECG electrocardiography may show normal findings in stable angina. So that's why uh, as the uh, uh, electrocardiography address shows us nothing. As the segment changes in acute ischemia, in acute coronary syndrome, so that's why we use exercise stress testing. Evaluates ischemia under exertion. This dance of ST segment. Next, coronary angiography, gold standard for assessing uh, coronary artery disease. Actually, for me, it's a stress test is a gold standard. But you answer in this manner. I don't mind. So cardiac biomarkers. Of course, principal cardiac biomarker is a troponin creatinine kinase MB, but these biomarkers elevated in myocardial infarction and normal in stable angina. So I see classification. So what classification we can have? No, actually not very good correct question, but anyway. So we have a type, for example, stable ischemic heart. So stable angina, stable ischemic heart disease. How can we describe this? Chronic, predictable chest pain triggered by exertion or stress, relieved by rest or medication. So like a nitroglycerin. Next, acute coronary syndrome in includes unstable angina, non segment elevation myocardial infarction, ST elevation myocardial infarction. This one characterized uh, by a plaque rupture and thrombosis. But we understand that acute coronary syndrome is the so-called working diagnosis of the first minutes of the patient, uh, of, of in charge of the patient. A silent ischemia, so myocardial ischemia without any uh, obvious symptoms, often detected, often, very often detected on electrocardiography, on stress tests, very good stress test, of course. This is a silent one. Just ECG will show you nothing. Silent ischemia is a stress testing. No, of course, uh, positron emission tomography, but it's, we, do, we don't use it now. Stress test, for me, it's a gold standard. If you said coronary angiography, okay. Next, variant or so-called variant or vasospastic angina, transient coronary artery spasm leading to episodic chest pain, often at rest. And finally, microvascular angina is chemia due to dysfunction of small coronary vessels presenting with angina like symptoms despite normally angiography. So a highly controversial point, but if you find this on your big exams, you answer in this manner. So it's chemia due to dysfunction of small coronary arteries presenting with angina-like symptoms despite normal angiography. What is this actual syndrome? I don't know. So it's a very, very good question. No idea. So types of angi angina. We can say it's stable, unstable, variant, and microvascular. Okay? In this manner. So stable angina, fist atherosclerotic plaque. That is predictable chest pain during exertion and relieved by rest or medications. We understand that. Unstable one. Plaque rupture with incomplete, incomplete occlusion, pain at rest or minimal, with minimal exertion, high risk, high risk of myocardial infarction and complications. Variant angina, variant angina is coronary uh, artery spasm, episodic pain often at night, not, relate, not related to exertion, response to calcium channel blockers, we suppose. And microvascular angina, dysfunction of small coronary arteries, chest pain with normal coronary arteries, common in women. So women's problem, yeah. Next point is the complication. Now what complication of ischemic heart disease? It's the same complication of coronary artery disease. Myocardial infarction. What is this? Complete occlusion of coronary arteries leading to myocardial necrosis. Heart failure. 
of course, due to chronic ischemia damage leading to reduced cardiac output. Dangerous arrhythmias, not just arrhythmias. Ischemia-induced electrical instability leading to ventricular fibrillation and sudden cardiac death. Uh, what else? A valve dysfunctions, especially mitral valve dysfunction, papillary muscle ischemia, papillary muscle leading to mitral regurgitation. About diagnostic approaches, my beloveds, I find this question. Uh, when you ask me about that. So, first and principal point, doesn't matter what exam question you've got, or actually what is your future medical practice is, or what narrow speciality will choose. So, this is a history taking, is a gold core. If we talk about my, uh, ischemic heart disease, that is coronary artery disease, is, is the chest pain exertional or at rest? What is the character and location of pain? What provokes pain? Is the pain relieved by nitroglycerin? Are the risk factors such as principal one? Huh? Uh, smoking, hypertension, diabetes. No, you can say hyperlipidemia, but I think anyway. Smoking, hypertension, diabetes. And re uh, family history, of course. Don't forget about family history. Next point, physical examination, blood pressure and heart rate assessment, auscultation for murmurs or abnormal heart sounds, signs of heart failure, jugular vein distensions, pulmonary crackles, peripheral edema. Well, pulmonary crackles means we have a pulmonary edema. Huh? Peripheral edema, we have a corpul monale, or right, right heart dysfunction, right ventricle dysfunction. So, next, laboratory and imaging test, ECG, ester segment depression is ischemia, ester segment elevation in myocardial infarction. Actually, it doesn't matter. Any ester segment changes is a sign of coronary artery, no ischemia, acute ischemia. Uh, echocardiography elevates, evaluates left ventricle function and wall motion abnormalities. Echocardiography. So we see these kinetic uh, zones, our kinetic, these kinetic zones, not normal kinetic zones, wall motion abnormalities, so-called. So we elevate, evaluate left ventricle function. Coronary angiography identifies the degree and location of coronary artery stenosis and cardiac stress testing identifies ischemia in patients with suspected coronary disease. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just some, uh, no, we can say case-based discussion. For example, 60-year-old uh -huh, male with exertional chest pain. 60 years old man with exertional chest pain. Symptoms, retrosternal discomfort during exercise relieved by rest. It's a coronary artery disease. Findings, normally is electrocardiography at rest and test test segment depression during stress test. What, else, what is our diagnosis? Let's fix it. Of course, it's a stable angina pectoris. What to do? Lifestyle modification, beta blockers, statins, antiplatelet therapy, etc. No statins. Lifestyle modification is a core. Okay. Next case, 60-year-old woman with chest pain at rest. Symptoms, intermittent severe chest pain at night. No, at night. Huh? Findings, transient ST segment elevation during attack. Normally, normal coronary angiography. What do we think? Diagnosis variant and variospastic, vasospastic angina. Between us, I have never seen this in 40 years. Never seen. Oh, who knows? Anyway, you said variant vasospastic angina because normal coronary angiography. Management, calcium channel blockers, avoid triggers such as smoking is a principle actually. And so on. Okay. So thanks for your questions. So I think I, I helped you. My aid will be helpful for you for no big exams and not for your future medical practice. Actually, don't forget to follow and subscribe my Dr. Y YouTube channel, my beloveds. Don't forget. And please, <laughs> subscribe my private channel, <laughs> my beloveds. I've created for you, my dear students. Dr. Telegram, Dr. Y in, Dr. Y Telegram, Telegram. 
Telegram. So you tap in searching mode. Dr. Y, why it's me? W-H-Y, like question, why? So you find this bot, you click start, you choose your plan, very cheap. And you will see a lot of interesting things. Your MCQ test, your big oral exam test, cheat sheets for students, huh? and so on. Uh, gifts, may, maybe very interesting gifts, presents, etc. But subscribe. Oh, God bless you.